When I applied for my physiotherapy degree back in 2021, there was barely any information about how to pass the interview. So this video is the new updated strategy of how to pass your physiotherapy interview and get onto the physiotherapy course that you want. Unless things have changed since I applied for my degree, when you apply for your physiotherapy degree, at the very least you'll be asked to do a CV and to write a personal statement. Your goal here is to make these as good as you can. So on the CV, are you selling yourself? Are you talking about your strengths and your perks and the ex areas of experience that you think are quite useful and relevant to physiotherapy? This could be DOV awards, physiotherapy, clinical experience, volunteering, anything that makes you stand out in a positive light. One of the mistakes I made on, my, on some of my physiotherapy interviews was I talked about the roles and responsibilities in day-to-day -day life of healthcare staff in general and not specifically physiotherapists. Looking back on it, the awareness that I showed was good because it shows that I understand how Physiotherapists work with other staff in a multidisciplinary team, which is really important. However, to be blunt, when you're doing your interview, you're not applying to be a nurse. You're not applying in medical school to be a doctor or to be a, a pharmacist. You're applying to be a physiotherapist. Therefore, in your interview, if you mention that you have the awareness of what a day-to-day -day life is like for a physiotherapist specifically, as well as healthcare staff, it shows you're making an informed decision about to apply to be a physiotherapy student and to work in a career in physiotherapy. Physiotherapy is similar to a lot of other healthcare roles, whereby you'll be exposed to patients who are in a possibly a lot of pain and discomfort, whereby it's vital to treat these patients with a positive and caring attitude. While it's important to be knowledgeable from a clinical point of view, the more I treat patients, the more I've realized that it's so important to have good communication skills and to leave a good lasting impression on patients. While you are working in healthcare, especially with the current state of the NHS, there might be times when you are overworked, there might be times when you see a lot of patients in, in, you know, in discomfort and suffering, and other staff also might be rude and have a go at you, or all of these might happen all at the same time. And while this doesn't happen every single day, I would be lying if I said that a lot of my placements were not challenging from an emotional point of view, and a lot of other students who have done a physio degree kind of say a similar thing. Therefore, if the person interviewing you gets the impression that you are a rude and irritable person, I don't care if your CV has floated down from the clouds of heaven, you're not going to get on that degree. Be nice, be approachable, come across as a kind individual, which I'm sure that you are. I won't talk about this too much, but the NHS and the British government are fairly open about what their goals are for healthcare and what they expect from healthcare staff. For anyone that's thinking about becoming a physiotherapist in the United Kingdom, you need to know about healthcare policies. Examples include the Integration and Innovation Plan, the NHS Constitution, and the Long Term Plan, amongst many others. This includes Health and Social Care Acts and other types of law documentation that dramatically change the ethics and decisions around what healthcare staff can and should do. If you're short on time before your interview, at the very least, I would have a glance at the NHS Constitution because I believe there are summarised versions of it on the internet. Look at the values of the NHS Constitution and try and demonstrate those values in your interview. But in general, the more you are up to date about healthcare policies and the more knowledgeable you are about them, the more aware you will be about what the demands of the future workforce of healthcare staff are. In other words, you and me. Also, what I will do is, down below in the description, I will link the most important healthcare policies and websites that talks about this kind of stuff, so you can look, and look at those before your interview, or just before your physiotherapy course in general. This is probably one of the biggest tips I can give you to pass your interview. It is essentially to do your homework on three different areas. Firstly, it's to research the university as a whole. Did you get a good feeling when you went on campus? Are there aspects to the university that you really find impressive? Are you impressed by the facilities? Have you heard good things from the students who have went there? Secondly, research the course. What are the placement opportunities? Are there any modules that you are interested in? Are there any research opportunities on your course? Lastly, and most importantly, research the staff. 
academic staff have what's called outward facing profiles. So in other words, there will be some, usually some kind of information about this each staff on the course. I know that when I mean staff, I mean the lecturers. For example, throughout the information in this little snippet about the staff, it might talk about what areas of physiotherapy they are passionate about, what kind of research have they done, what kind of modules do they lecture on on the course. And for many people, they are being interviewed when they apply for these physiotherapy courses and just on courses in general at university, they're being interviewed by the academic staff by the lecturers and at the end of your interview they might ask you oh do you have any questions this is your opportunity to ask the questions based on the homework and reading that you've done if there was a module that you really like the sound of and you want to know more about it ask about it if one of the lecturers on the course has done research into i don't know the risk of acl retears ask about it it's these kind of questions which is one of the best ways possible you could show your enthusiasm and to make you stand out compared to the other applicants. So let's talk about specific questions. Throughout your interview, there are some commonly asked questions that the lecturers will, or whoever's interviewing you will ask. One of the questions they might ask is, why this university? Why are you studying at, why do you want to study at the University of blank or this university. This is where you will again talk about the things I asked you to look into. Another question they will ask is why physiotherapy? You know there's nursing, you become a doctor, you can become an opth ophthalmologist, a dentist, like you can do so many other things you can go into. Why do you want to go into physiotherapy specifically? Now this should be personal to you. A lot of people say something along the lines of, oh, my uncle or my brother or my mother had this kind of debilitating condition or injury and the physiotherapist really helped them. I personally talked more about like the philosophical sides of altruism and helping people and how I want that to align with my career and what I do in life. But again, it, that was specific to me and the reasons for physiotherapy or for why you're studying physiotherapy or going into that, into that career should be specific to you. So definitely have a think about this if you're kind of unsure. So the next thing they might ask you about is to do with clinical experience. What kind of clinical experience have you got? And this might be quite difficult for you. For example, for me, when I applied for my degree, because it was, I was in the thick of COVID, I couldn't get any clinical experience. So if you don't have clin clinical experience like I did, then you need to talk about the other areas that I've mentioned in this YouTube video to try and kind of compensate. But if you do have a clinical experience, especially stuff that's relevant to physiotherapy, definitely talk about it and talk about the skills and knowledge that you've picked up from that and how that would be useful for your placements and from the course moving forward. Sometimes they will also ask a question along the lines of why you? Why sh should we think about putting you on this course? Or why are you studying physiotherapy and not Brian next door? Another way of saying it is what skills do you think you have that would be beneficial to being a physiotherapist? So you don't want to be egotistical and say that you're the best thing since sliced bread, but equally you don't want to undersell yourself. Mention your passion for physiotherapy and the skills that you feel like you would be able to bring to the table as a physiotherapist. So for example, with my strengths, I'm highly organized, I have a good work ethic, I'm empathetic, and I have good communication skills. However, two of my really big weaknesses are that I don't have good adaptability. So when, when there's a sudden situation, I don't always respond to that situation as fast as I probably could do. Another one of my weaknesses is that I'm not great at delegating. Sometimes I feel like I'm a burden asking other people what to do, when actually there's times when you need to delegate tasks to other people because you can't do everything. Having that awareness of your strengths and weaknesses is really impressive to other people. And in all fairness, I have learned this through my clinical experience so far but take, take a knee mentally metaphorically and think about what your strengths and weaknesses are and how that applies to physiotherapy but especially your strengths and why you feel like those strengths would be beneficial to you if you were to pursue a career in physiotherapy. Another thing they might ask as well as specific questions is they might describe to you specific case studies or specific situations and they might ask you well based on the situation, if you were in the situation, how would you respond? How would you react? And to kind of give an example, uh, one of the case studies that I had was, let's say theoretically I was a mentor 
and one of the people who I was mentoring on the students, we were about to walk in and see a patient, but the student forgot to wash their hands. How I was asked basically, how would I respond in that situation? What I said to the interviewer, I said something along the lines of, oh, I would definitely try and tell the student to wash their hands and use antibacterial gel because, especially because of COVID and cross-contamination, you don't want anyone getting ill. You want the clinical and healthcare environment to be you know, sanitized and clean. I also said that, especially if it's the first time the students made that mistake, I wouldn't be hard on them. It's, it's easy for anyone to forget you know, small things like that, especially if you're seeing multiple patients a day, I'll just gently remind them to wash their hands and sanitize. I would possibly be a bit more firm on them and try and remind them if they forgot multiple times because it's important to be hygienic, especially in a clinical environment. But especially if it was the first time, I would try and be as supportive and just, um, I wouldn't make a big deal about it basically. Another thing that I said was, I, I said that I would try and say it to the student out of ear reach of the patient because I don't want the patient to worry that they're in an environment that possibly isn't clean or hygienic themselves. Another case study I was given or, or scenario was I was asked, okay, well, if there's a patient who's in a chair, they need to be mobilized to try and for many different reasons, you need to mobilize them and put them onto a bed or a different chair, but they don't want to move. So what do you do? In this situation, I was, I was kind of stumped because I was kind of like, well, you know, I want to respect what the patient does, but as a physio, I have a responsibility to mobilize the patient as well. But ultimately, the conclusion that I came to was I, tr I would try to describe the importance of mobilizing the patient to the patient, to try and motivate them to get up and move or for me to help them to mobilize. But ultimately, if they didn't want to do it, I can't force them. I'm not gonna get security to force them to move the chair, for example. So that's kind of, obviously, I was sensible of how I did it. That's kind of the answer that I gave. And hopefully, from those two examples that I've given, you've kind of got the impression that my answers were kind of thought, they, they, they were kind of thought out, but they showed empathy and thoughtfulness and sorry, empathy and thoughtfulness for the patient, but they will also try my best to be ethical and meet my roles and responsibilities as a physiotherapist. But I will admit with some of these case studies and some of these scenario questions, there's not always a black and white. So I would say just follow your gut. It is sometimes a judgment call and try and act in a way or try and, try and have your answer for those questions in such a way that they demonstrate the values of the NHS constitution that I mentioned before. So this is a bonus tip that I've only found out recently. There's a lot more YouTube videos helping people to pass their band five postgraduate interview to get a job in physiotherapy than there are interviews to get onto physiotherapy degrees, or at least from what YouTube is showing me anyway. However, that's not actually an issue because I've realized that a lot of universities will structure their interviews and their questions for students around these band five interviews. So that means that if you've watched all the student physiotherapy interview videos like this one here, then that means you can still watch band five physiotherapy interview YouTube videos and still get a lot of use out of it. So ultimately, just to wrap things up, my advice would be if you have time, definitely check out those videos. If you've liked this video and you found it useful, then you might enjoy the video I did here where I talk about how to get 70% or more on every single university essay that you do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you there. Adios amigos.